Welcome to the Spirit Spot. My name is Raina Shea Broussard, and it's my hope to help guide you into your Spirit Spot, even if just for a few moments out of your day. I invite you to set aside whatever you have before you, if you're able, and we'll begin with three conscious breaths. Breathe in through your nose, slowly, evenly, deeply, filling your belly, and breathe out through your mouth, emptying your belly. And breathe in, and breathe out. Breathe in, and breathe out. Our touchstone for today is judgment. Sadly, it seems like there's a lot of judgment going on around in the world, especially by many who might call themselves children of God, or even Christ followers. Even though we may see things in the world that we don't like, the only way to change darkness is to snuff it out with light. So here's a little reminder that none of us is in a position to judge. Our reading today comes from the Illustrated Book of Sacred Scriptures by Timothy Freak. Do not be judgmental. Scripture teaches us to look to our own failings, but only to see the best in others. We cannot know the individual predicaments that others face in their lives and are in no position to judge anyone. When we are judgmental, we distance ourselves from others and trap ourselves in our own separateness. When we see the best in others, we reach out across the divide that separates us. From indigenous religions, a Native American saying, Do not judge another until you have walked some miles in his moccasins. From Judaism, Do not judge your comrade until you have stood in his place. From Christianity, the book of John. Early in the morning, Jesus went to the temple once more, and many people came to see him. While he was sitting giving teachings, some scribes and Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and placed her in the middle of the group of people. They asked, Teacher, this woman has been caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses decreed that we should stone such a woman to death. What do you say? They said this to catch him out, so that they might have some offense to charge him with. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger in the dust. But as they persisted to demand an answer, he stood up and said to them, Let the one among you who has never sinned throw the first stone at her. And then he bent down again and continued writing with his finger in the dust. When they heard this, they went away, one by one, beginning with the eldest. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus looked up and said to her, Woman, where is everyone? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Master. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go on your way, and do not sin again. From Christianity, the book of Matthew. Don't judge others, and you will not be judged. For you will be judged by the judgments that you pronounce. What you give will be what you get. Why do you see the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye, but don't notice the log in your own eye? 
How can you say to your brother, Let me take the speck out of your eye, when there is a log in your own eye? You hypocrite! First take the log out of your own eye. Then you will see clearly enough to remove the speck from your brother's eye. From Confucianism, the Analects Confucius said, Attack the evil that is within yourself. Do not attack the evil that is in others. From Hinduism, from Garuda Purana The vile are ever prone to detect the faults of others, though they be as small as mustard seeds, and persistently shut their eyes against their own, though they be as large as vilva fruit. From Buddhism, the Dhammapada Dwelling on your brother's faults multiplies your own. You are far from the end of your journey. And from ancient mystery religions, Epictetus We cannot choose our external circumstances, but we can always choose how we respond to them. If it is our feelings about things that torment us, rather than the things themselves, it follows that blaming others is silly. Therefore, when we suffer setbacks, disturbances, or grief, let us never place the blame on others, but on our own attitudes. Small-minded people habitually reproach others for their own misfortunes. Average people reproach themselves. Those who are dedicated to a life of wisdom understand that the impulse to blame something or someone is foolishness, that there is nothing to be gained in blaming, whether it be others or oneself. One of the signs of the dawning of moral progress is the gradual extinguishing of blame. We see the futility of finger-pointing. The more we examine our attitudes and work on ourselves, the less we are apt to be swept away by stormy emotional reactions in which we seek easy explanations for unbidden events. Things simply are what they are. Other people think what they will think. It is of no concern to us. No shame, no blame. Again, our touchstone for today is judgment. I invite you to pause throughout your day for three conscious breaths and to reflect on how you might be judging others when in reality we should not be blaming or judging others or even ourselves. And may you create a great day.